Rupert, I read your book, uh, The Nature of Consciousness, and I think it's one of the most uh, lucid and clear uh, expositions of the understanding of the most intimate experience we have of our existence, which is our mind, our consciousness. Particularly, I like the fact that you have a very clear definition. I go to conferences where people endlessly argue about what is consciousness, and I think your definition uh, of consciousness is that in which all experience uh, appears, uh, that in which all experience is known, and out of which all experience is made. If we just stick to that, everything becomes clear, because experience is just basically uh, the modified forms of consciousness. So why did you write this book in the first place? Well, unlike, unlike my previous books, this was a book that I wanted, I hope, will speak at least to a certain extent to the scientific community, as well as to the non-dual community. It is um, an attempt to make a subject that sometimes seems abstruse, complex, intellectual, really um, easy to understand in one's own experience. So it's a very uh, experiential exploration of the nature of our experience. All we know of experience is mind, and ultimately all there is to mind is knowing or consciousness. Therefore the ultimate science must be the science of mind or the science of consciousness. So we just had an experience right a few seconds ago. An airplane flew by, uh, we heard it, and if we had looked up we would have seen it. Yes. Are you saying that airplane or the experience is not only appearing in our consciousness, and that experience uh, is known in our consciousness, but actually that is made out of consciousness. Absolutely. W what knowledge or experience did any of us, either of us have of the airplane other than the sound of it and the sight of it? In other words, our only knowledge of the airplane or indeed of the world is perception and all perception, as you rightly quote, takes place in consciousness. That is happening the, in consciousness. This, this perception, this sound is taking place in consciousness. The sight of this world is taking place in consciousness. It is known by consciousness. And the only substance present in consciousness out of which this perception is made is consciousness itself. So pure all knowing. those people sitting in that airplane, that airplane itself, this microphone, this table, this cup of water, this body, and all the thoughts that go along with the knowing of that um, is formless consciousness. Exactly. It appears in consciousness and is made of consciousness. But consciousness itself has no form, but all experience is the activity of this formless consciousness. So growing up in India, of course, I'm familiar with um, Patanjali and Advait Vedanta, uh, one of the first things you read in Patanjali's and uh, that uh, everything that exists is a modification of consciousness and the purpose of yoga is to get to the source of thought and the source of thought is also perception, sensations, yeah. images. So I grew up knowing that and then I, you know, trained in medicine, neuroendocrinology and, you know, uh, not having a daily practice of even paying attention to this knowing, which I had as a child, yes. um, I got kind of bamboozled into uh, the world of physicalists and materialists, um, particularly in neuroscience, who said, you know, that's nonsense. The brain is the source of thought, even though they obviously cannot explain how chemicals produce thought or perception or sensations or and images. Of course, even though the brain is a perception in consciousness. That's right. Um, when I look at an MRI of my brain, the experience is happening in consciousness. Absolutely. So, uh, 
what would it take for scientists to get to understand this? Because they're looking for consciousness it, in the brain. It, it would take just simple, straightforward honesty. The recognition that all experience takes place in the mind and is known by the mind through the mind. Therefore, if we want to know the ultimate reality of anything that is known by the mind, it is first necessary to know the essential nature of that mind, because the mind superimposes its own limitations on everything that it knows. And the mind, too, is an activity in consciousness. Yes, so th if we want to understand the ultimate reality of the universe, we have to first understand the nature of the mind through which it is known. And this is the meaning of the Sufi saying, whosoever knows their self knows their Lord. That is, whosoever knows So again, knows uh, right now you and I are having a conversation. Who's having a conversation with whom? The, our conversation appears as a flow of thoughts and uh, Im images and sounds. But there is no um, separate subject of experience. In fact, we cannot even in the ultimate analysis say that there are separate objects called thoughts or sounds. When we watch a, a movie, the landscape never comes into existence in its own right. It is only a modulation of the only thing that truly is, the, the screen. I get everything you're saying, but I talk to cognitive scientists and neuroscientists and all of that. They call this an object. Would it help if we, instead of calling this an object, we just called it a perceptual experience? What about if you ask... What about if you asked one of these scientists or neurologists, do you ever know or come in contact with anything other than the knowing of experience? Which is this. They would have to say, if they were honest, they would have to say, no, all I ever know is the knowing of experience. In other words, knowing or consciousness is the only substance that is ever experienced. Uh, uh, ask, ask these neurologists, do, do you ever actually know anything other than the knowing of experience. So this is the knowing of experience. Th this perception, as all there is to this perception is the knowing of it. As is this. All there is to the sensations of your body is as the knowing is all of this. it. All there is to the world, our experience of the world, is the knowing of it. In other words, all that is ever known is knowing. And what is it that is knowing this knowing? It is knowing. Knowing itself. All there is is consciousness knowing itself as all these observers, it, it, all these modes of observation, yes. all and these consciousness, perceived objects. Exactly. Consciousness appears to itself as the outside world of objects from the perspective of a separate subject. Mm -hmm. So matter is what consciousness looks like when viewed through the perspective of the finite mind. So that's the meaning of tattva masi. Exactly. You are that, exactly. I am that. Exactly. All this is that. Yeah, exactly. That alone is. And I, I hope my book, although being um, rigorous intellectually, is also a very experiential exploration because you and I are not interested in discussing ideas. We're interested in the nature of experience. But that's also Gyan Yoga in a way. Exactly. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. So if you want to understand the nature of reality, if you want to understand the nature of your own being, you want to understand in fact, the whole process of manifestation uh, as experience in consciousness, I think um, you should read this book. Um, it might change you forever. And once you have that radical change, it's like a child that is born, there's no going back. Uh, I hope you read the book, uh, The Nature of Consciousness. I read it and it influenced me. I quote Rupert in all my lectures. And uh, I hope uh, uh, you will benefit if you read this book as well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.